Hey everyone, it's now been over two weeks since Season of Mastery released and people are already starting to hit level 60 all over the place. And your goal once you hit level 60 will be to get your character more powerful, obviously. Thankfully, Season of Mastery isn't short of awesome avenues for gearing up your character. So I think this is the perfect time to start talking about gearing up. Season of Mastery has significantly more content available from the get-go at 60 than Classic WoW had in Phase 1. Content that can provide your character with some very strong gear to step inside Molten Core with. And you may or may not know about all of those new avenues available to you. So today I'm gonna give you a gearing guide for SOM, from the easiest ways to get gear and thus the ones you should do first to the hardest ones, so the ones you should probably leave for last. So without further ado, let's get into it. Alright, first off, just like it's the case in every WoW expansion I think, your first avenue for gearing up is gonna be through questing. And questing in Classic can provide you with some very good pieces that you might be keeping for a very long time. That's why I suggest you start with this right away. Now, before we go further into questing, here's a disclaimer for you if you're still leveling. And this is only a concern at the higher levels, I would say. If you come across some of these quests that reward you with any choice of armor, armor or weapons, always select the one you're gonna be using for the spec you're gonna be raiding with. You'd be surprised how many pre-raid bis pieces you can come across while questing. Ideally, you'd want to check your pre-raid bis list to know these in advance, but you could also just always select the choice that you could be raiding with, and only say once you reach level 50 plus. But yeah, to name just a few examples of quest reward items you'll be keeping for a while, you have the leggings of the Ursa for fury warriors for example, comes off a level 50 quest in Felwood, and you'll be keeping those until you manage to get the legs from the last boss in Dyrmo West. Mark of Forgering is another powerful neck piece that you'll be keeping as a melee or hunter until you get the neck from Anixia's head. Spirit of Aquamentus from a quest in Ungoro for casters and much more things like that that I'm skipping. So check your pre-rate best list and make sure to either do those quests while leveling or at least once you're max level. Okay, moving on, your next avenue of gearing in Season of Mastery is gonna be crafted gear. Either crafting those things yourself, hence why choosing the right profession is important in this game, or getting another player in your guild or someone you know to craft them for you if they're BOE. I don't recommend buying stuff directly from the auction house, it's generally gonna cost you more. Things like Lionheart Helmet, Heart of the Wild, Robot the Archmage, to name just a few. Or even more basic things like the Felcloth set or the Frostweave set to start off with. That being said, you're probably not gonna have enough gold the moment you hit 60 to get all of these, so those are more like long-term things to aim for, especially the epic pieces, but I would recommend starting working on those as soon as you can. The question is, should you spend your gold on your epic mount first or on one of those important epic pieces? And the answer is, it's up to you really. If you're someone who farms a lot of gold in the outside world, the epic mount could be a great investment. But if you're someone who's only into raiding, you can start with crafting those powerful gear pieces. Up to you. Alright, moving on, obviously the next avenue of gearing that you should get into is dungeons. Classic has a lot of dungeons available at max level, and with Dyermo being available from the start now, unlike with the first iteration of Classic, you'll be busy doing dungeons for quite a while. If you played Classic, you know how insane certain dungeon pieces can be and how long they will last you. In the first iteration of Classic in 2019, I got Hand of Justice completely randomly while doing BRD while leveling, and I kept that thing all the way into Naxxramas, and I even used it in Naxxramas for certain bosses. Or for example Spellweaver's Turban from General Dracosat. That's another new thing available from Phase 1, and this will last you for a very very long time. And of course, how could we not mention the Dungeon Set 2, aka Tier 0.5. This gear was designed to give players who didn't raid, raid equivalent gear. But don't get too excited about dungeon set 2, it's better for certain classes than others. For rogues, for example, it's just insane. You'll be keeping the 4 set for this all the way into AQ40. For other classes, you'll only be using 1 or 2 pieces or even no pieces at all for most healers, for example. But yeah, dungeons in classic are super good for gearing, and now they should be easier to form too with the presence 
chance of summoning stones near each dungeon's entrance, so people should be more down to forming groups for these or joining groups for them. That being said, they're still classic dungeons, so quite long and quite tedious for some of them. Okay, next up we have Reputation Vendors. So unlike in TBC and subsequent expansions, Classic doesn't have a lot of reputations that offer gear. In fact, the only ones that do are the PvP reputations. Among those, the easiest one to level up is the Alterac Valley Rep. You'll need to participate in quite a few AVs to reach Exalted, and obviously you'll get more rep by winning, so how fast you reach Exalted will depend on how good your faction is in AV. But the AV rep has some very solid pieces for a lot of classes. I recommend you get it to Exalted sooner rather than later if there's something you can use from here. Then the other two reps are the Warsong Gold Rep and Arati Bison Rep. Completely day and night in terms of time it takes to reach Exalted compared to AV. That being said, there's pieces that are even more insane to get from here. Pieces that were added in later phases of Classic, but that are available from the get-go in Season of Mastery. So if you don't mind some PvP and can invest some time in those BGs, you'll be rewarded with some crazy pieces of gear. Of course, not for all classes and specs, so first check what there is to get before you make your decision. Next up, real quick, for Season of Mastery, Blizzard enabled Silithus Dukes and Royal Lords from the get-go in Phase 1. Those are bosses you can summon by farming Twilight sets from the Twilight mobs around the camps in Silithus. Then, summoning Templars. You can kill those with 2 to 3 players. Then, after you kill enough Templars, you can summon Dukes. Those require at least 5 players to kill. Then, after you kill enough Dukes, you can summon the Big Royal Lords. Those require way bigger groups, anywhere between 15 to 20 or even 25 to down. Dukes, so the second tier of bosses you can summon, already have some very good pieces that they can drop. Surprisingly enough, some of them are also BOE, so they could be great for making gold. And obviously, the big royal lords are gonna have the best loot tables, with epic raid equivalent gear that they can drop. So yeah, look into those, maybe there's something you could use from them. Then, of course, after you've exhausted all those avenues of gearing and got some good amount of pre-raid this gear, you're ready to set foot inside raids. Raiding is obviously harder in Season of Mastery, much harder, so you'll probably want to get a good amount of gear before dabbling with this. In fact, like I said at the start, we're now two weeks into SOM, and no one even set foot inside Molten Core or Anixia yet. And it's not like there's a shortage of level 60 people, there's more than enough in most servers to tackle raiding. But people know how tough it's become now, and they probably want to get prepared quite thoroughly before dabbling with it. Anyways, with Molten Core and Onyxia available now, there's some nice pieces to get in preparation for Blackwing Lair and beyond. Things like Quick Strike Ring, the Onyxia Tooth Pendant, Talisman of Ephemeral Power, Ring of Spell Power, Choker of the Fire Lord, to name just a few, are all quite solid pieces that you'll be keeping for a while. Speaking of upcoming raids, obviously this is something that's gonna be available in the future, but ZG is a really nice and easy 20-man raid which has quite quite a lot of neat pieces of gear to get from. And after that, once AQ releases, you also have AQ20, another 20-man raid. Not too hard and which has great pieces to get for people who can't invest the effort into getting in those harder 40-man raids. But obviously, with all the insane avenues of gearing outside raiding available now in Season of Mastery, it definitely makes raiding less important in terms of gearing than it was originally. So don't feel bad about skipping a week or or two of raiding, or even not raiding at all. It's definitely less important now, especially in phase 1. And with raids releasing every 4 months or so, it means that most people will not be fully geared going into the next raid anymore. Anyways, let's move on to the harder avenues of gearing. At this point, we're getting into content that you'll have to invest tens or even hundreds of hours into to even get a single piece of gear from. So definitely not recommended for casual players but if it's your thing, go for it. And obviously to start off, we have PvP ranking gear. Ranking up in SOM is now supposed to be twice easier 
roughly according to Blizzard. But twice easier still doesn't make ranking any easy at all. You'll still be investing tens of hours per day at the higher ranks to climb the ladder. And if you stop, you'll fall behind equally as fast. With that being said, if you can manage to reach rank 11, 12, 13 or god forbid 14, you'll be going home with some insane gear that will last you for a very very long time. Again, certain classes will make better use of this than others. Fury Warriors and Hunters will be wearing the full set at least until BWL. Healers don't have much use of this obviously. And other classes will only make use of the rank 10 or rank 11 pieces for example. Past that you have world boss gear. It's hard to say whether world bosses are harder than PvP ranking. Obviously that will depend on your guild and who you're competing with. But world bosses only spawn randomly every few days and are generally insanely hard to get a tag for. People will be camping those 24-7 and making summoning networks for them. So you'll see guilds popping at world bosses locations the moment they spawn, if not all already there in the first place of course. But yeah, world bosses have some awesome loot. I remember Crystal Adorned Crown, aka Kak from Azuragos, being an incredible healing headpiece relevant up until AQ40. Empyrean Demolisher from Kazakh was also an incredible mice for warriors that I personally replaced in Nax, I believe. And Fell Infused Leggings from Kazakh too are also crazy for warlocks. Not sure for how long though. World bosses are not available as of the time of writing this video though. They will be added in Phase 2, which should be released releasing in only 6 weeks from now. But yeah, the moment they're available, you'll see people camping them 24-7. Some guilds will even start selling gear to people once all their guild got what they want. And there's probably only gonna be less than 1% of the player base that will even be able to get attacked for one of those, let alone kill them. But yeah, with that, this covers pretty much all the main avenues of gearing in Season of Mastery. I probably forgot some things here, so if there's something else you want to add, drop it in the comments to benefit everyone. And remember that raiding now is quite tough and not as important for gearing as it was in Classic originally, so don't feel like you have to clear every lockout or even raid at all to make your characters powerful. All the things we covered here should make your character on par in terms of power with some someone that is actively raiding in MC and Oni every week. With that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, remember to give it a like and subscribe to the Classic WoW Curios channel for more content like this. I will see you guys in the next one very soon. Bye for now.